Here's Andre. You're on with Ron Fez. Hello? Hello? Andre, you're on with Dr. Cass Ingram. This is Andre. And let me give you some of my vital stats. Right. I'm seven foot four, five hundred sixty pounds from Grenoble, France. Wow. That's a and, big guy. And I just wonder, someone my size, mm -hmm. do they need more of a food remedy? Yes. So, so like that, you know, I heard you yes, talking about Yes, these. yes, a big daddy is going to need more stuff. More right. oregano. You, you know, you got to take a lot of it. I mean, you got a guy like this. He's big one. Six foot ten. He's he's vulnerable. No, right. no, no, no. I'm bigger. He's right. a big I'm, one. Seven foot four. I'm seven he's foot four. He's a big four. one. Hey, big daddy, let me tell you something. Five hundred and sixty pounds. Stop it. Stop it, Stop it no for me. Hold on, Mr. France. You need to get a hold of my books. And I recommend the resvitinol. Why? Right, not, not to use as a step stool. I'm already through. I I'm, know. I'm giant proportion. All right. I'm going to recommend something because you're so big. Look in there about oregulin, which is fantastic to regulate the, the pancreas and the liver. You need it. And for your heart, I'm recommending for your health. One thing that makes me nervous okay. is when you bring up some of this snake oil remedies. You're afraid of snakes? I have a huge, you would almost say a giant fear He must not snakes. be telling me the truth because if he has giantism, he does need to support his health, his pancreas and liver. But if this is a phony deal, then you wouldn't need to. Well, Is it the truth that you're he, he, seven foot you four, have... 500 pounds or not? Oh, yeah. I'm seven foot four. I don't know if I believe you. 560 pounds. I don't want to make a from joke out of this. Right. With but one giant this is not pancreas. a joke. We better move on. This right. is real stuff now. This is scientifically researched herbal medicine. That's what we're talking about. We're not trying right. to sell anything, okay? I, I get nervous when I see the doctor because when I see that snake well, wrapped around hey, you know what? Each that's person simple. has their own opinion. You that's go your way, I'll go mine. All right, so I guess this one didn't work out. Andre, yeah. thanks for yeah. uh, calling, though. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What do you care if I die? I stop it. I'm yeah. Right. Uh, here is. You got all kinds of stuff out there. In well, DC. what are you going to do? Yeah. It must gonna... be all that depleted plut plutonium getting into some. Exactly. You know. Uh. He... Hello. Here's Roxy. Ro Roxy. Roxy. Now, are you going to speak the truth for us? Doctor, how are you? I'm doing it. How about you? Roxy Carmichael. I'm calling from Savannah, Georgia. Uh, you were talking about flu shots. Right. And uh, I was I have a brother in law and he brought up the fact of distributing flu shots to mass populations. Right. He said that doctors have outgrown their malls and now I'm planting census counters and UPS codes. What, what, the, what, have you ever run heard that of that? One by me again. Doctors outgrew what? Outgrew the mall, so not to offend you or anything, but they're trying to keep track of the population. And they're implanting census counters. I, I brought this point up because I got the flu shot and I still got sick. Right. And this is what he said. This is. This I is, don't know about that. What I do know for sure is that the flu shot has had some contamination problems. I've had some friends that have died uh, secondary to the flu shot. I'm a physician. We traced it. We knew it was... I mean, it's got some serious side effects. And this year, there's little flu and no flu shot. You I tell had, me. I had a second cousin got autism from it, too. Yes, there is evidence. Yes. That there, yes, yes, yes. All of a sudden, just start snapping his fingers in the corner. You know what? Oh, Let that's scary. Something. I don't want to hear well, that. Let me yeah. tell you something. One more thing I want to tell you. Yeah. The flu shot has formaldehyde and mercury in it. Okay. I wish somebody would tell my cousin that. Well, it's and you, you've got it all Snappy. in the book. It's in the book. It's all about this. In your book. How do you spell your name again, sir? Uh, it's last name I-N-G-R-A-M. Okay, I'm writing that down. Can I bring up one more point? Yeah. Sure. I have a brother, Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. No. He says that there's mind controlling agents injected into our body. I don't know anything about that. You, you've never heard of that? Never heard of it. Government, what Isn't that close to Love Canal? That. No. There is a trace. Yes. There is a connection between the toxins and disease in, in in vaccines, but I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm just going to tell you what the science says. But there's mercury, not the mind control. Mercury so. and formaldehyde. Oh, That's all. You, Neither one's good you for you. Neither one are good. Now, you wouldn't even touch a ball of mercury in science class. Why would you inject it in your brain? I wouldn't. I wouldn't accept the census counter either, so I, I, I can see that terrible that. people putting that in your body. I don't know. Right, I'm well, sorry. Thank, I can't help you on that. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you. 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 Thank you, sir. You bet. Uh, here is uh, Myron. Myron, you're on uh, 
the air with uh, Dr. Ingram. Myra, um, this is Myra, Dr. Ingram. Yes. Hey, Dr. Ingram, I was going to ask you, do you know about the benefits of the emo oil? Uh, emo oil, I, I've used it with the great success. What are you um, using it for, Byron? Oh, you, you, my, Myron. Oh, Myron, I'm sorry. Myron. It's okay. Don't what are you know. using it for, Myron? Uh, I'm using it for the, for, I put it um, around my nose and, and, and it makes the flu symptoms go away. Okay. And, um, it, because of the, it has the Japanese green tea and, and lavender and, uh, and other roots. What do you know about where I can use emu oil in other places on my body? You know, the only thing I know about emu oil is that it's a great emollient for mild to moderate irritations. Is it... Well, I get irritations at all every day. Is okay. it emu or emu? Emu oil. It's, a, it's made from an animal fat. But you know what? I really don't use it, and but it is... Definitely known to help irritated skin. That's the best I can do for you. Right. What about in a gel form, though, sir? I don't know. Just for skin conditions, irritations of any kind, gel or oil, doesn't matter. Thanks right. a lot. Uh, okay, well, do you, do you think that there's a link between that and the influenza? I have no idea, except that this, let me just tell you this. Animal oils do have some antiseptics in them. Uh, that's how they keep their skin from getting disease. If it makes you feel better for that, it isn't going to hurt you. And, uh, but you know, the one thing that has been tested is the going back to oregano oil. Is, you know what? It's interesting that Dextra is killing people, Vioxx is killing people, Celebrex is killing people, but we don't call those snake oil. As Has emu oil ever killed anybody? Emu? Yeah. Come on, of course not. But no. if you mentioned something like oil of oregano that's been well researched and shown to kill the cold and flu virus, then somebody starts, you know, making some nasty comment. I don't understand well, that. I didn't want to get nasty. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. All right. Take Thank care. you, Myron. Um, 866-277-4969. What is the name of the book, Doctor? Uh, the name of the book is Natural And this is no joke. I want to make right. it clear to people. It's called Natural Cures for Killer Germs. It's well documented. It's about the use of natural substances for those who are interested. If you're not interested, that's fine. One gentleman talking about emu oil, that's fine. But there's no claim here to cure some kind of fatal disease. The claims are in the book. If, you know, we have every right to write down in books what we believe as physicians. And I certainly believe that you can use natural medicines to save your lives, especially if there's no modern medicine that works. And you talk about lack of working is one thing, but how about toxicity? Right. You've got an insider by the name of Dr. Graham who comes out. For those skeptics in the audience, maybe you can learn something. He says that this is the absolute worst at, uh, time for drug toxicity. It's never been this bad. Uh, and that the drug companies are more interested in meeting the uh, The FDA is more interested in meeting the needs of the average drug company than meeting the needs of the average patient. This is what Sandra Queeder says, MD, about, and she's from Harvard. All right. Uh, That's no, a big story. Jeffrey Orban right. from Harvard. Let's take one more call. Here's yeah. Jan. Jan, you're on with Dr. Ingram. Hey, this is Jan. Hi, Jen. And I just wanted to uh, remind everyone out there that even though it is called the flu season, sometimes it may not be the flu. It could be an allergy. Isn't that right, doctor? If you have really bad flu symptoms... Because have... one time, everyone thought I had the flu, right. that I was really sick. Right. Then it turned out I only sneezed around our dog, Tiger, and they were going to make us get rid of our dog. And my new three stepbrothers were really upset at me. And then it turned out I was only allergic to his flea well, but powder. But that's not flu Because symptoms. our dog got like three yeah. baths during the night, okay. and I was still sneezing. Whatever, but that's not... Flu, that's sneezing, that is allergy typically, but flu is flu. Uh, you, can, you can have flu-like symptoms from certain other things, like being exposed to a toxic chemical, but sneezing, definitely, you're right, that would be allergy. That could be allergy. And it's really bad when you're from a big family. Okay. One time, me and my brothers and sisters, we all got the measles. Uh -huh. And we all had the measles so bad, we had to get a doctor just for the boys and a doctor just for the girls. Uh -huh. And it was a big to-do of my family. Okay. All right, so we well, decided, hey, I... some families have two TV sets. Okay. We'll just have two doctors. I wish you the best of health. That's yeah. the best we can do. And I wouldn't rule out, you know, simply... 
the Christmas miracle cure. One time, my mom lost her voice mm. right before she was supposed to sing in church. Okay. She was going to sing, Come on, you faithful. She lost her voice. Mm. And my little sister, Cindy, went to Santa Claus and said she didn't want any choice for Christmas. She just wanted one Christmas wish for my mommy to get her voice back. Okay. And it happened. And she could sing on Christmas. Hey, listen, whatever has helped no, someone no behind you. Just have a Christmas miracle. Okay, thank you. It's thank really you. Driven. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for being on, Dr. Ingram. Uh, the name of the book again? Natural Cures for Killer Germs. It's about using natural things for viruses, bacteria, mold, fungal conditions, and respiratory conditions. And it does talk about the problems with the vaccine as far as the safety. All right. Well, thank you very much for yep. being on the show today. Take care. Right. Thank you, doctor. Good. Your book's going to do a lot of good for a lot of people. I hope it does. I'm walking proof of that. Okay. He was having so much more fun at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, then he uh, suddenly didn't enjoy it as much. Just didn't enjoy it as much. Then started just getting upset, yelling the claims are in the book. I didn't even know what that meant <laughs> at that <laughs> point. <laughs> People have legitimate questions. We're not all doctors. Hey, Myron did pretty good. That was ogre. Really? Yeah. Nice work, Myron. Yeah. No, it's Myron. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Angry with him. Sorry I bothered you. I know. He came in with so much energy. And finally, all right, goodbye. <laughs> Jen's still my favorite. That's my all time. <laughs> I'm just getting into really obscure. I didn't even know the one with the measles. I'm like, I never saw that episode. <laughs> boy, girl, and uh, boy, doctor, and girl, doctor. I never even some families have two TV sets. Well, that'll be a nice call for Giant Brian to take tomorrow. <laughs> the guy was so excited to do the show. Oh, he came on. And he's like, hey, we're going to razzle dazzle you <laughs> with the Mount Remedies. Hey, man, you've got to cry, brother. It was like getting a call from, from the wrestling doctor. <laughs> Dr. Hogan. I thought it was Dr. Matthew Lesko. <laughs> I know. He did have a Matthew Lesko. <laughs> right now. What did he say? He said, hey, I think that went really great. Uh, your callers are really uh, fun. <laughs> Have me on any time during yeah. the flu season. Yeah, any time that I can uh, push my book. Right. Right. All right. <sighs> Let me tell you something, man. Can you can you get this book in a, in a real bookstore? you got to call that number. you got to call that number. I give out the yeah. number again because I, I didn't push it for him. 1-800-243-5242. I think Iris wrote it down. And I just have to say, over and over again. <laughs> Five, six, seven, no matter what he said. <laughs> Andre the Giant, I couldn't breathe for him. <laughs> well, he was really walking on Andre. I've seen people, I've seen the seven foot four come up 15 times with some guests. And I always do the same gimmick of, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's six five. No. <laughs> what? You're bigger than that? Giant for <laughs> I like it when he said, when he actually set Andre up by going, if he really is that size. If he has <laughs> oh, no. giant, what do you call it, giant titus? What was oh, giganticism, I guess. Do <laughs> you have any pills for serious? Do you have any pills for giganticism? You'll ruin the guy's gimmick. He can't get smaller. What pill could you take to get you smaller? <laughs> All right, well, uh... We'll take a break. Uh, we'll write back. Hey, uh, we'll be doing our Super Bowl bets a little later on. Brian, you're acting like you want to lay a bet down. And I told you, because of everything that J-Dubs went through this time, it's a bad place for you to put a bet down and think maybe you can back out. Well, I mean, me along with everyone else knows that we're riding the bus to Jacksonville. Jerome Bettis, he's healthy. Big Ben is back. I have my pin. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, the butcher today was telling my chick how he, uh, in his whatever card thing that he got, he got a Big Ben card that he thinks he's going to make a huge amount of money. A Big Ben rookie card. Oh, nice. Mm. And she, you know, she didn't even know. She comes, it has an R name, so I laid it on her. She's like, yeah, that's exactly what he was yelling about. That's what he's serving at the butcher shop now, Roethlisberger's. All right, we'll take a break. We're right back. Run a fez.